Ms. Robertson. Yes, Your Honor. Your world was turned upside down at the age of eight when you received the shocking news that the man you believed to be your biological father was not. Yes, Your Honor. You were informed that the defendant, Mr. McBain Sr., is your father. Yes, Your uh, Honor. No. You've dragged him to court to prove that today. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. McBain, you say during your military career you were married to the plaintiff's mother. However, you're certain that you are not her father because you claim her mother was unfaithful and you have proof. Yes, Your Honor, I do. Ms. Robinson, now, what happened when you turned eight years old? Please tell the court. When I was eight years old, my mother had sat me down and she had found Mr. McBain in the phone book and she said, this is your biological father right here. She pointed him out in the phone book? Yes, Your Honor. And from that point, I didn't really think anything of it. I was eight years old. It was kind of like it was nothing. So now my question is, is why... If he's denying it, why is his name on my birth certificate? Why did he sign his rights away? And, Your Honor, I have proof right here. Ryan, can you please hand me that evidence? Yes, Your Honor. And this, I can see, is still affecting you, even as an adult woman. This yes, memory Your Honor. of being told this at eight years old and having so many unanswered questions. Yes, Your Honor. So this is your birth certificate. Yes, my name it may be on there, Your Honor. However, it's on there because the state put it on there. I had nothing to do with, uh, with uh, putting my name on her birth certificate. So you're listed as father. Yes, but that was against my uh, objections. But during that time, you were married to her mother? Yes, ma'am, I was. So a child born within a marriage is presumed to be yeah, you, the husband's child. Yeah. So your name was automatically placed on the birth certificate as father. But even in that moment at the hospital... I wasn't there. You weren't there. But you you would not have voluntarily placed your name on the birth certificate if you had a choice. No, Your Honor. Because I you had doubts even then? Even then I had doubts. That's one of the reasons why I let uh, Mr. Ayers go ahead and, and adopt her, because she did deserve, uh, deserve to have a father. She's not... It's not her fault who her mother is. So you were married to her mother? Yes, Your Honor. And you served in the military? Yes, I was... Thank in you the... for your service. Thank you. But during that time, you say she was unfaithful. Yes, Your Honor, she was. Not only she was unfaithful, she asked me uh, for a threesome at one point in, in, in the marriage as well. So, Ms. Robertson, I want to move to you a little bit because after eight years old, how were you coping? I let it go until I turned right before my 13th birthday. And that's when I had told my mother that all I wanted for my 13th birthday was to meet Mr. McBain. What did she say? She got it for me. She I did. don't remember that at all. Um, I... Well, wait a minute. If you don't remember it, let me have her tell it. Ms. Robertson, <laughs> what do you remember? It only lasted about 40 minutes, and that was, like, more than anything in the world for me at that time. And then it was over. After that, I believe I had talked to him a couple times after that. Then all of a sudden, his phone number got disconnected. It was taken out of the phone book, and... He was just gone, like he fell off the face of the earth. I'm not her dad. Your mother is absolutely shaking over here. I want to stand her up. Ma'am, please. Ms. Graham, thank you for being here. Do you have any doubts that Mr. McBain is your daughter's biological father? Your Honor, well, well, we, Mr. McBain, marriage. you and I were married. We were living in the same place. Yes, and I worked a lot. And you were there. I was in the United States Coast Guard, Your Honor. Your Honor. And the first unit th that I was in... We were one and four duty, which meant I was on for, uh, I was off for one day and on for four. And you're suggesting that you worked too much to be her father. No, I'm, I'm saying I'm not her father because while, while in the Coast Guard, just before she informed me that uh, she was pregnant, I was told by the Coast Guard I was sterile. And, and you've got three kids after that, Mr. McBain. How yes, are I you sterile? I have three kids after that. However... It was due to stress. I was under a great... Oh, yeah, illness. you were under stress with other women. I never once cheated on Miss Graham. I'm not like her. You believe she was cheating on you around the time Ms. Robertson was conceived? Yes. Explain. As one example, I, went, I was working seven days a week for about three months straight and went back home. As I'm walking across the living room, I look over and there's a pair of boots and a coat on... Uh, uh, on the floor and the coat on the... Your Honor, those the, uh, were his, bo his boots and his coat. 
They were size 10, Your Honor. I wear size 12. The coat was a medium. I wear a, a, a 2X coat. Anyway, I walked over to her room. I beat on the door. I said, I don't know who you are in there, but you've got 30 seconds to get out of my house or you're going to be really sorry. No. Anyway, so you completely refute I met this suggestion that you were in your room with another man. Not only was she in a room with the other man, but she was having sex. I don't... So you feel Your like Honor, you Mr. caught Ray's her... just been a sperm donor to me. That's all he was. Our whole marriage was a joke. You were a cheat, that's why. She cheated on me from almost from day one. So it's obvious you all had some marital issues. <laughs> During the time Ms. Robertson was conceived, do you remember anything? Yes, that's about the time that we had the threesome. Your Honor, there was no threesomes in Kodiak. And if there was any threesomes at all, it was because Mr. McBain had asked for them. And why would I do that? I did that to to try and appease you and keep your legs closed. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Now, Ms. Graham, I did hear you admit that you were cheating, but you said you were cheating after Ms. Robertson was already conceived and born. Now, earlier you said... Yes, yes, you meant... You never slept with anybody. No. Before Ms. Robertson was conceived, no, I had not slept with anybody but Mr. McBain. That is an outright lie, After I found out I was pregnant with Ms. Robertson, then we had split up. I believe that the guy that we had the threesome with is is actually the uh, father of, of Ms. Robertson. Oh! Excuse me. And who is that? It was an individual I was stationed with. Yeah, you were stationed with a lot. I know, and but so were you. But wait a minute. He's talking about... Ooh. So, Mr. McBain, you truly believe this other man could potentially be Ms. Robertson's father? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Why? Well, between the Coast Guard telling me I was sterile and the fact that the man is Hawaiian, he's Samoan. I am... Your Honor, this girl is white as white could be. So wait a minute, you're saying the other guy is Samoan? (laughs) Yes. And so that's how you're... You believe that Ms. Robertson looks Samoan? Some of her facial features, yes. (laughs) No. (laughs) Your Honor, this is a confusion I put up with during the whole marriage with this man. The confusion she put up with (laughs) is she couldn't figure out who was in her bed. Woo! So, Ms. Graham, I have to ask you respectfully, do you remember this threesome? Not that he's talking about, no. Do you remember any threesome? There was one or two, yes, at his request. <laughs> okay. You're the one that brought your I friends do... to me. And why would I do that? <laughs> because you couldn't fulfill it. Okay. So... Is that right? You're moving on. I met at yeah. least ten gentlemen... Who, who claimed that they had been in her bed. Ten? Yes, ten. Really? Yes, Your Honor. How do you know this? They were talking I went about around, it? Yes, I got them to admit... To, I, I first, the first thing I did was I found out who they were. I got them to admit to what they had done because, you know, guys like to talk. So you befriended them, then once they said it, you said, aha. Exactly. Your Honor, we were well separated after this time. So you remember a time when you were having... Not ten men, no. Okay, but you <laughs> remember when you were, uh, let's say it nicely... Promiscuous uh, with one other man, uh, yes. Well, that wasn't really the word I was going to use, but since you said it. <laughs> yes, you were promiscuous. promiscuous one other man at a time. Ms. Robertson, I can only imagine (laughs) how difficult this testimony is for you to hear. And as I look at you with tears in your eyes, and you have to listen to this going back and forth between your mother and the man she says is your biological father, it's just not right. Anything you've heard thus far, does it make you think any differently? Do you... No, because I look like him. I'm built like him. Um... But the part I'm having trouble with, Mr. McBain, is... Even if your account is true, even if she was sleeping around, if she was your wife and you were also sleeping with her, couldn't you potentially be Ms. Robertson's biological father? I don't feel that she looks like me, as much like me as she thinks she does. Also, due to the fact of what the Coast Guard told me and due to the fact that, that Ms. Graham was, was, is a cheater. What do you think 
Ms. Graham's motivation was to sit Ms. Robertson down at eight years old and say, I, I need to tell you something. I have no idea whatsoever what, what she was trying to pull there. Because yeah. nobody would walk their daughter, their child into this brick wall. <laughs> nobody would do that. Thank you. So I have, I, have, I, I have three other kids that I've made and then one other that I took on. And my fiance has two children that I, I, I'm father. Uh, <laughs> no wonder father he's too. denying her. This is your too many. This is your fiance. Yes, ma'am. Please stand, ma'am. I'd like to hear from you. State your name for the court. My name is Sarah Lawrence. Sarah Lawrence. Okay, you are Mr. McBain's fiance. Yes, I am. Uh, had he ever told you that he had another child by his wife, uh, potentially, even if he didn't believe it, potentially? Um, well, actually, I found out about Miss Robinson. Um, she had contacted him through Facebook and also called, and um, I had no idea who she was, and I kind of freaked out on him a little bit. But then he <laughs> briefed me on um, what her um, motive was, and that was to find out if that was her father. If you were not her father, why did you show up at my house and tell her, I am your daddy? When and did you turn do that? around and sign you your rights away the next day for her. See, he wouldn't do that. You don't I know him. I was yes, at you did not house. know him. I was at your house, You did yes. not know him. And the reason I was at your house is because the state of Oregon was taking money out of my unemployment for child support. Because so she's your I daughter. Went to your house, and I sit in your living room two different times, and that's all it took, and your then-husband decided he was going to adopt and asked me if I'd sign, uh, sign over my rights. And I said, yes, because it's only fair to her that she's got a father. He was willing to do it, and I didn't feel that she was my daughter. So, Ms. Lawrence, you hear this story about your fiancé giving up his parental rights, 18 months old, this baby's 18 Well, he tells old. me the story of how he's telling you now. Your he's honest. an honest man. He takes care of his responsibility. He doesn't... He's just not the way that she's painting the picture for everybody. Your Honor, for the last I'm years. an honest woman, too. Ms. Robertson, all of this aside... It's confusing. What, it is. Yeah. It is. And what I see happening before my very eyes is what I know happened then. <laughs> that they both do all of this and then you just fade to the back. Your Honor, no, no matter what... Your mother's running her child. mouth now. I'm trying to talk to you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I have a father, Mr. Ayers, that has taken care of me. I'm very blessed for that. And, um... Which is what my, my goal was to have him, in having him adopt her. And then I have Every my mother... Every child deserves to have a father. But the truth is, you relinquished your parental rights, and it wasn't until three years later... It wasn't that long, Your Honor. She was a baby at the time. And I'm scratching my head at, at how the, the court you would let... Pushed your right. uh, because he didn't think yes. that she was his. That happened. And because you guys were separated. You guys were you divorcing. You didn't know. No, I don't. I wasn't there. But exactly. I, I believe so what you, he tells me. You're not even in this picture. <laughs> so, Ms. Robertson... She is in my picture. Back to you, since yes, I honor. seem to be the only person that addresses you. How in the world have you been getting on and managing all of this. And what do you hope to get hope from this answer? I hope that he is. Um, I want to know more about my background. Um, like he said, he has three other kids. I would like to become in contact with them as well. And... Uh, and if it turns out that she is... Let her speak. I just... Mainly my heritage and uh, to get to know him, his... You know, I, I possibly have siblings out there. So even after all you've heard him say... I can see in your eyes, it still means the world to you that if he's your biological father, for you to have a chance to know him. Yes, Your Honor. If she is my, my child, then I'm going to have to do some uh, reevaluating of my thinking. You sure if, are. If she is my <laughs> child, if she's my child... 33 what, what years I'm, late. Will you just let me speak for a moment? If she is my child, by all means, I will step up. And, I, and, and help her in any way. If she's not my child, I'll still help her find her, who, who her father is. Thank you. And I have those answers for you, you all. Ron, these results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Robertson v. McBain Sr., when it comes to 33-year-old Maylene Robertson, it has been determined by this court. 
Mr. McBain Sr., you are not her father. Ms. Robertson, how do you feel? Are you all right? Yeah. So, Ms. Graham, you've been very sure. You don't have to live with the fact that you've lied to your daughter. Your Honor, I have to live with the fact that I lied to myself. No, oh. no, 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 no. You're not gonna go all psychological and get me off my point. Because this is the problem. I'm talking about your daughter, you're talking about yourself. <laughs> That's been the problem. I have been saying it over and over again. And no one listens. Everyone's still yelling, me, me, no me, me, no she, she, no he. And Miss Robertson has just faded into the background when she really is the person that has endured the most pain. You did your dirt. He did his dirt. <laughs> but the pile of crap landed on her. That's not right. No, Your Honor, it's not. It's not right. No, it's not. Ms. Alston, you've come to court to prove to the defendant, Mr. Holmes, whom you first met at the age of 15, that you are his biological daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Holmes, you say there's no way she's your child, and today the DNA will prove your case. You say her biological father is David Alston, the man who is on her birth certificate and paid child support for her. So, Ms. Alston, tell us how you first found out the defendant might be your father. Um, well, Mr. Austin and my mom were married. So, um, as a child, it all started there. I grew up in a home with my mom with my seven siblings. So, um, one summer, I was going outside to play, and my mom was outside talking to a guy, and when I walked up, he, she was like, he was like, tell her, tell her. And she looked at me and said, this is your uncle, this is your dad's brother. So, um, I proceeded to meet the family, which is my younger brother, my grandmother, aunts and uncles, and they embraced me like if they knew me from day one. So I have always assumed that Mr. Austin was my dad because his name was on my birth certificate. But at 15, she told me that Mr. Holmes can be my dad. He's always been a father figure to me since from day one, with, even with the doubt. Mr. Holmes, you don't believe she's your biological child? No, I don't, Your Honor. Why? Explain to the court. Because Miss Austin's mother, back in the day, she was like fast. Mm -hmm. And because I met her at, at, a, at the school bus stop, she was in high school. And two days later, after I met her, I had sex with her. I called her again uh, a couple of days later, asked her to come back, and we had sex again. So it was kind of like a booty call. Yeah, I didn't know nothing about her until 15 years later. So I kind of felt that she wasn't mine because I didn't even know that she existed until that time. Did you know she was married? No. And how were you made aware? By my mother. Did you immediately think this may not be my child or were you just accepting of the news because she says your family was accepting of her? I accepted her because I know how it feels to not have a father. But I didn't really put my all into it because, like, the way I met her mother and the lifestyle that I was already living. All right. And so, Ms. Alston. Yes. When you finally did meet Mr. Holmes, what was that like? It was wonderful. It was actually a good feeling for the kid in me because I've always wanted a dad. So it was actually great. I, had aban I have abandonment issues from Mr. Alston, so it actually felt walking me. It felt like I had a father who wants to love me for me. So it felt wonderful. So... What was your relationship like with Mr. Alston? Explain that. Um, Your Honor, I hate to say this, but I, I hate him. I do, because he abandoned me and left me. So when you say Mr. Alston abandoned you, did you try to have a relationship with him and he rejected you? How did he abandon you? I tried to have a relationship with him and spend time with him. He wouldn't have time for me. I would visit his family members and he wouldn't be around. Excuse me, Your Honor. Yes. I say Her father kind of remind me of my father. The reason why I kind of like accepted her in because I know how it feels and I have a father. But I kind of like don't believe that she's mine. This woman here was my mother and my father. So I'm the type that I know how, I know where she's coming from, but still, I still don't believe that she's mine. 
understand. I'd like to hear from your witness, sir. Will you stand, ma'am? Yes. <clears throat> Please step up to the podium and state your name. Jenny Peterson. Miss Peterson, you are Mr. John's Holmes, Holmes' mother. Mother. What do you have to add to this situation? What do you know about what's going on here? Well, her mother came to me first and said that Donna was my son's child. So I told John, I said, John, Donna is my grandchild. And when her mother told you this, did she say or mention that there could also be other possible fathers? No, she never admitted that to me. She just told me my son was Donna's father. Hey, and I plainly. believed it. Hey, Yon. Yes. See, I usually find out that I got kids when they like two months or three months. And when I find out after 15 years, like, it's, it's like, hold up, what's my set me up being funny or something? Two months, three months? You ever been there when any of them were born? With all my kids. With all of them. I got seven. With all my kids. Wow. I mean, it's like I'm being set up, you know what I'm saying, or, or, or somebody putting a practical joke. That's what I, that, that's how I felt about it. Because you really did not feel like this was your child. No, from, I did not. From the, from the start. From the start. Yes, ma'am. I feel like she's his child. I always been around her. And why do you feel that so strongly? Because I, it, it, feeling inside of me that when Lori brought her to me and say, Miss Jenny, this is your granddaughter. I say, you sure th that she's my granddaughter? She said, yes. Hey, but Ma, how, how can you find out that she's my daughter before I find out? That's, that's what I, that's what that's was my That's the way problem. it was, that she came to me first. She came to, John, you know you was in the street. But you understand that the order in which she told it does not in any way have any bearing on the DNA. Right. That doesn't matter. But I got to be the last to find out. And that bothers you. And that bothers me. Ms. Austin, I have yeah. to ask you, do you have any inkling as to why your mother said one man was your father, then another man? No, your did she ever give you a reason? She never did. She's never Did you ever me. ask her? No. I never asked. So you I just... Guess, when she told me and I met Miss Jenny, when they took me in as a family, I just ran with it because she said he was my dad. Did you run with it because you had such a difficult relationship with Mr. Alston? Yes, Your That Honor. you just needed somewhere to run? Yes, Your Honor. Have you ever had a doubt in your own mind since your mom told you that Mr. Holmes was your father? Yes, Your Honor, I do. You have? Yes. Even you, you've doubted? Yes. I think it's time we meet Mr. Alston. Jerome, would you please escort him in? This is the man on your birth certificate? Yes. Yes, Your Honor. And you tried to have a relationship with him? Yes, I just wanted to be loved. Thank you for joining us today. I'd like to have you explain to the court she says she was told for the first 15 years of her life that you were her biological father and then all of a sudden she was given another name. What do you know about this? 15 years ago? No. I just found out to what now. So you're saying that up until recently you still considered her your daughter? Yes, that's my daughter. There's no way in the way I would he not calls, think that. Excuse me, Your that's Honor. My he calls me his daughter sitting here but he's never been a dad to me. He's never been a dad. I don't... Now, I don't recall no phone calls. But she says she tried to have a relationship with you and you rejected her. No, yes. now, when I moved... No, what happened is when I moved away, when I got remarried, it seemed like all that... I was, that's when the anger started coming through. But when I get these phone calls, it's all about money. Money, 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 money. If I didn't got the money, I get disrespect. I never had... I got, I got my other... Three, I got three kids now. My other two kids. Never disrespected me, never treated me like that. If she called me up, first thing she say, not how you doing, daddy. I need some money. I was not dead be that. I pay my child support I, every month. I pay my child support. Money is miter. Where's the love? Where's the care? Where's the time? Where's the Christmas is? That's what we're here though. for. But That's what we're years. here for. We're not we talk, here about money. We're talking about 15 years, though. We're I, talking about actually out, 16 after years. After 16 years, you said you have another, you had the father, you had another father after Who's 16 years. Who's been more years. of a father to me but than I'm you have. Why you, you signed the birth certificate. Why didn't you come to me 15, 16 years ago? 
Why should I come right, to you? We, we could have done this 16 years ago. You're the parent. I'm the child. But you don't have any doubt in your mind that you are her biological father. No doubt. No doubt. Which evidence did you bring? I just got the birth What's certificate. What's in your folder? Birth certificate. Now, this is the birth certificate that you are on. Yep, I signed. I wouldn't sign a birth certificate if I didn't... If, if I thought she was my daughter, I wouldn't sign nothing. I'm, I, oh, I don't know if she's my daughter. No, I wouldn't sign it. I could have took a blood test back then if I'd had any doubt. You presented to the court as a picture of what, Mr. Austin? Of the family. That's the family. These are Me, pictures because you were present in her life then? Yes. Involved. I was married to her mother then. And so I'm trying to understand this relationship. What was the nature of the relationship? If you lived in the house with her mother, I mean, this is your daughter. Mm -hmm. When you and her mother broke up, why was it you didn't make an effort or make it a priority to still be in her life? What happened her to life. this relationship? I was in her life up, up until I left. And I left in 1999. But what about after you left? After I left, I, I came up back and forth. And I, when I, did, I used to come to Maryland back and forth. And when I come over there, I do go see her. And I wanted Donna to move in with me when she was about seven years old. And she said no. Then when she when got into a... Her mother hospital, said no? Her mother said no. Okay. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Holmes. I'll say something. Yes. Um, I never, I never known about this guy right here. And at the time that he was with her, because I met her in '82, I was having sex with her then. I don't know if he was a boyfriend or whatever. I was, I was with her then. But it, and it wasn't even a relationship. You know what I'm saying? If I felt a certain way, so I would go get her. The relationship was not a committed one. Right. So this is the man on your birth certificate. This is the man you were led to believe for 15 years was your biological father, and yet you have no relationship with him. Yes. This is the man at 15 your mother told you really is your biological father, and yet he doubts that you're his biological child, but his family accepts you... Yes. ...as their family. Yes. As and yet, is. Mr. Austin, when you hear this... I mean, this is... 15 years. 16 years, and I found out today. So you, you live in your life and you have no clue that no she's clue. been told somebody else is her biological no father. Clue. No clue. And that she's gone through all this and established ties with another family. You have no clue. No clue. But calling me a year ago, two years ago, asking me, Daddy, can I have this? Daddy, can I have that? Daddy, can you pay my bill? Did you, you let me move in? Did you help me find a roof? No At that time, I was a parent myself. So I was not. I did not. For 15 years, you thought that was man's your father. Why you asked me in 2010 and you say that was your father? Well, that's a good question. 15 Austin. years ago. And at that time, like I said, I was still trying to build a relationship with him because I'm very doubtful that Mr. Holmes is my father. You're doubtful now. You said a few minutes ago that he's your father. And so if you did not believe Mr. Austin was your biological father, you were told he wasn't and you, you said you don't care for him, you don't care for him because you feel like he rejected you when you he needed abandoned help? He abandoned me, yes. Wow, this is confusing. Yes, it is. I mean, 16 years, you find out something different. I was like, wow. Okay, if you knew that she was your, your daughter, mm -hmm. it shouldn't even matter. Thank you. It shouldn't even matter. If you know deep down in your heart, man, mm -hmm. you should never... That, that's why I feel the way I feel, man. Mm -hmm. You a claimer, but yeah, you don't want to be... You don't want to have nothing to do with it. If that's, your, if that's your I daughter... I several times to have the movie. say I am, if you know for sure deep down in your heart... You don't turn her away, man. I didn't turn her away. When she was, when she was don't, six, man, all the way up to high school, don't, I wanted her to move in with me. you say you do not. I, I tried to get her to move in with me because she had a better life and she to move with me. She didn't want to do that. Her mother didn't want her to do that. It doesn't matter who I live with. Before I, li before I moved to Illinois, it, I didn't come up with that. That doesn't matter. I didn't even see you before you moved to Illinois. I never knew you was moving to Chicago and I never knew you was getting married. This case is... It is very interesting to me. I stand here today and I, I have to ask you, Ms. Austin, what are you hoping for? Are you I'm hoping... just hoping that... Honestly, I'm hoping that Mr. Holmes is my dad. You are? Yes. So, in other words, if, if not... We, we, so, how about us having a relationship going through this? What about that? We need counseling. Yeah, maybe, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Um, I think with that said, it's time to get the results. Jerome? These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Austin versus Holmes, as it pertains to 31-year-old Donna Austin, 
and whether Mr. Holmes or Mr. Alston is her biological father, it has been determined by this court, Mr. Holmes, you are not Ms. Alston's father. Mr. Alston, you are not Miss Alston. What? Get the <laughs> Why is she doing that? Lord have mercy. You still my grandbaby. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Sit her down, man. Oh my God. Sit down, oh Miss. Oh, wow. This, oh my God. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Miss Alston. But you still, you know, you still got us, don't you? That's a mother for us. <laughs> Ain't nothing changing. Ain't nothing <laughs> This entire courtroom is in shock. Are you all right, Mr. Alston? You truly believe that was your biological yeah. child? Signed birth certificate. Obviously, there was another person. Have you ever received any other information that it could be anybody else? Whatever relationship or non-relationship you had with Mr. Austin, I could feel his reaction. He thought he was your biological father your entire life. Can I give you a hug? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Ms. Allen, you've opened your case today to prove to your on-again, off-again boyfriend that he is the father of your 20-month-old daughter, Adriana. You hope today's DNA results can save your family. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Brewer, you say it is medically impossible for you to be Adriana's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Allen, I'll start with you. You say today's case means everything. Yes, Your Explain. Honor. Explain. Well, we have a current child together already, and I'm here to prove to him, to let him know that he's Adriana's father. And he claims the other one, our current child, but he don't claim her, and that hurts me badly. And I just, um, like, I'm assuming because he have, when his other relationships he was in, they was um, blaming children on him, saying it was his child and all that. And I feel like he just taking it out on me. And I feel like it shouldn't be the case. And you believe his doubts are unwarranted? Yes, Your Honor. How do you feel, Mr. Brewer? Do you believe your doubts are credible or not? Yes, Ron, I, I know she's not mine. I have evidence that she was talking to other guys and stuff like that. And like, like she said, I've been hurt before. So, I mean, I've had children put on me and I just don't believe she's mine. And so you admit you are denying this baby? Yes, ma'am. So tell me why you have this doubt, Mr. Brewer. Explain to the court. One, one day her phone went off and I was like, what's going on, you know? So I ended up looking at the phone. And when I looked at the phone, it was one of her friends' name. But when I started reading, it wasn't no friend. Oh. It was another man. So... And what did the text message say? Your Honor, that was, that's a lie. Well, it, it was one of the, the... One of the text messages that I read was like, you know, I don't, I don't want to wear a condom. Oh. Really? So I'm like, you know, what, what's going on with this? You know, why, why is she talking about that stuff like that? Your Honor, it's his baby. I just want him to stop denying the child. I didn't mess with nobody. The text message he's talking about, I don't recall that. I don't remember none of that. I don't remember texting anybody like that. Yeah, I have guy friends. If that's the issue, he don't need to have female friends. And so is that the only text you saw, Mr. No, Brewer? No, ma'am. It, it, it was, like, several different guys. That, that, that's what made me mad. And, I mean, that, like I said, that, that wasn't the only conversation. So specifically, what did the text say, the other ones you saw? Well, it was That's another true, text Your message Honor. about that the guy, a guy wanted to at her, and she said she didn't care. That is, Your Honor, that is a lie. Oh. <laughs> okay, can we say that more respectfully? Um, I'm sorry. I don't even know if it's I'm, a way to say it. I'm sorry, Your Honor. The, the, the guy, Forget the guy... it. I got it. Okay, okay. So there's a text that says that. That's a lie, Your Honor. That, that never happened. None of that happened. I just feel like... 
You keep cutting don't... him off while he's trying to testify. You don't want me to wrong. hear these facts. No, he's lying. Not that. He's just lying. None of that is true. Why is he lying? Like, he just... It's, it's been multiple times. And like, like I told him, the reason I started texting other dudes and stuff like that, because I just seen stuff he didn't say to other females. Oh, so and the truth is you were texting other men. Yeah, but as a friend-wise, not the way he talking. Not the way he talking. No, not you like lying. that. But you, the thing is, I didn't see him do it multiple times. When I was pregnant with my daughter, it was the ex he was talking to. He told her he wanted to have sex with her. Okay, so now we're, now we're getting to what's really going on. Yeah. So you playing a game for tit for tat, but you keep losing. <laughs> you know I say it every time. We don't win that game. We never win that game. If you get to the point where there's too many girls on his phone, then you just gotta be done. Because playing the game of tit for tat leads you smack dab where you are, paternity court. So now that we know what's really going on, and you've admitted you were talking to men on your phone. Yes, Your Honor. So these text messages you saw were text messages that made you think, well, maybe Adriana's not your baby. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. And then it, it was an incident. She worked at a department store, and somebody that worked there at the department store showed me a video of her having sex with some guys. Ooh. Why, really? Why, why are they supposed to be on break? On break? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, that is a lie. Like I told him, show me the proof. Because I want to see for myself. He wouldn't show me. So I have no idea what he's talking about. And I asked myself, which female told you that? So I'm going to tell her to show me. And he wouldn't tell me. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not going to tell you. And he just making this stuff up in his head. Because he'd have been hurt before. And he felt like since he'd been hurt before that he can't trust nobody. Your Honor, the thing is... And I feel like he should give me a chance to show him. Like, I do love him. I really do. And I want to be with him. And I want our family to be happy, but... Your Honor, the thing is, is, is the girl... The, the girl that worked at the department store... trying to store, talk to him, so of course she gonna make up lies about me. She was trying to talk to me. That's why she showed me the video. Because she was like, I, I don't want you getting done like that. But the thing is, what video? I never seen the video. I never did it. So I don't know what he even talking about. And you knew for certain it was Ms. Allen? Yes, ma'am. How did you know? Because of what she had on. What did I have on? I we, all, we all wear the same thing at work. So what did I have on? Denisha, that was you. We I mean, all I wear the same thing. So when you found out you were pregnant, take me back to that day. Um, when I found out we was pre I was pregnant, I ain't gonna say he wasn't happy, but the vibe he was getting off, you know? And it was just like... He was happy, but he wasn't. Like, it was a su big surprise to him, unexpected. We was already struggling with just one child. And then having another one made it even harder and tougher. When I was going to, into labor, I was having contractions. I told him I didn't feel good. I needed to go to the hospital. And it was a bad weather storm we had. And I told him I needed to go. He said, well, you going to go take yourself. I didn't feel comfortable going by myself. So I called one of my family members, complaining to them about that. And they told me, go on and call the ambulance. I called the ambulance, they came and took me myself. He came to the hospital maybe 15, 20 minutes late after the fact I had the baby. He looked at the baby and looked at me and said, are you sure this is my baby? I said, we're not finna start that. You did it with Junior, you're not finna do it here. You can leave. And it hurted me when he said that. The thing you is, said he did it with your older child. Yeah. And I said, you can leave. We don't have to deal with that. So he left. We talked on the phone. And I told him, I said, look, she's a preemie. She came a month early. Of course, she's not fully developed. She don't have her color all the way. So, Mr. Brewer, why were you acting so indifferent about the birth of the baby? I mean, what is going through your mind? You can't kick in the gear. Well, Your Honor, first of all, she had her previous pregnancy. She had... Con uh, like, the problems with, you know, where she was having false contractions and stuff like that. Okay. I said, if, if you really having trouble, you know, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and take me a shower. Just wait till I get out the shower. And I said, we'll go, I'll take you. So... And that's just one thing you had to learn that a man can't know. Yes, ma'am. Right. When and I you missed the birth. Yes, ma'am, but the thing was, like I said, I, I didn't know that she was... Because she didn't call me and let me know that, like, it was really happening. Oh, is she supposed to get on the phone? I mean, I would think so, you know. Let me let 
you know, we don't have no time to make no phone calls. It's right, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Right. That's not what we're doing when that happens. Yes, ma'am. I understand, Your Honor. So now we understand that. Yes, ma'am. But in your mind, when you got there, you still had doubts anyway. Yes, ma'am. But, Your Honor, look at my daughter and look at him. She looked nothing like me. She got my nose, but as far as anything else, no. She looked like him and his mama. And, Your Honor, one day we had, we had got to arguing, and she told me that I wasn't a dad. Oh, she did? Yes, ma'am. Take me back to that argument. What did she say? She, she was just like, that's why you ain't age around a daddy. And I look. Your Honor. Sounds like you said that, Miss Allen. Honor, the thing is, we got to arguing. As he always say, when we get arguing, he get mad and leave. Oh, I ain't raising them little kids. Them kids ain't mine. You take care of them yourself. Okay. So I told him, yeah, you're right. They ain't your child. I, I did tell him that. So you know you can't unring that bell. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. I understand. It was a wrap. Already have doubts, and then in the argument that comes out, he's done now. Can't take that back. That's another game we don't win. Yes, Your Honor. And, and another thing, Your Honor, too, is the blood type. Okay, and that, that's your other doubt. You say the blood type. Yes, ma'am. Explain. Well, Denisha, me, and my son, we have O negative. Adriana has A. So, I mean, it, it's no way that I'm the father. You understand what I'm saying? So, you submitted a chart to the court that shows the various blood types. You say... Miss Allen's blood type is O negative. Your blood type is O negative. Your older child's blood type is O negative, but Adriana's blood type is A. Yes, ma'am, so, that's correct. And you believe that it is impossible for two people with O negative blood type to have a child that has a, a blood type of A. Yes, Your Honor. Well, the court would like to learn more about these possibilities, so I'd like to call on Dr. Samantha Brown Parks. Jerome, will you please escort Dr. Parks into the courtroom? I have a few questions for her. Hello, Dr. Parks. Hi, Your Honor. Thank you so much for being back with us. Um, we're here uh, discussing the paternity of baby Adriana, and Mr. Brewer has stated that he believes that two O-negative type blood type parents could not produce an A blood type child. That is his position. He believes that that is why Adriana is not his child, and I needed to call on you to find out if this is, in fact, possible. Two O-type parents traditionally cannot make anything other than an O-baby. However, there's spontaneous mutations. So the DNA can actually change, even though mom and dad each give their part and they come together. Once it's combined in the baby, something goes a little different, and it starts producing those antigens that are on the outside of the blood cell, hence making the child a different blood type. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. What is the probability of that? What, is, what percentage of children could this happen to? So spontaneous mutations are fairly rare. Depending on your ethnicity and race, it can range anywhere from one in 1,000 to one in 10,000. Oh, wow. It doesn't happen very often. So the fact that it's so rare, I'm sure, Mr. Brewer, that furthers your doubt, right? Yes, ma'am. But... The fact that it is possible in some way, does that give you at least some sense that this could have happened? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. But overall, you still deny. You still say, this isn't my baby. Yes, Your Honor. Not just because of the blood type, but also because of the behavior. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. What are you thinking, Ms. Allen? You, you, you have a very defeated energy right now. Is there something that you need to say it just hurt that he not, you know. It hurt that he denied her. Man, I wish he had treat her the same. Like he treat them both the same, but you can tell he got the type of doubt. And you can tell by the way he look and interact with her. And it just hurt me like really bad. And I just want to prove to him that he is her father. I know it. That he her father. He the only person I slept with, so I know for a fact it's him. That's what they all say. So, Mr. Brewer, if, in fact, Adriana is your biological child, how do we move forward? I'm gonna take care of her. I mean, I, I, I treat 
both of them, you know, the same. I mean, I, I love both of them unconditionally. I mean, it's, I'll step up a little bit more. I, I do better. And if she is not, where do we go from here? Good riddance. So the stakes are high here and we need to get some answers. Jerome, I'm ready for the envelope. (laughs) These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Allen versus Brewer, when it comes to one-year-old Adriana Brewer, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Brewer, you are the father. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. You are very welcome, sir. Are you happy? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, Your Honor. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, you know. <laughs> That's my baby. I got two babies. <laughs> See? There we go. There they go. That's a family right now. He is excited, Miss Allen. And you yes. sitting over there crying. What you feel, honey? What I'm do happy. you feel? Hmm? I'm happy. You happy? Don't cry, it's all good. (laughs) He done sat up there and talked about it like a dog. Now he's talking about, don't cry, it's all good. (laughs) (laughs) Thank God for this courtroom. Listen, this is the power of what we do. Because getting down to the truth and getting rid of the confusion, we have ability to figure out how we can move forward. I know that was a lot, but I hope there were lessons in there that you learned, right? Yes, Your Honor. Two so wrongs you don't can't, make a right. Two, well, two wrongs don't make a right, but one wrong is wrong. That's right. So you stop being wrong. That's right, Your Honor. You, you right. Don't try to become no life coach up in here today. <laughs> you get your own life together. <laughs> 